Let's say that we as scientists are interested in understanding the relationship between these attributes. For example, how does weight in carrots affect the price? Or how does the quality of the color or the diamond's clarity affect the price? These kinds of questions, where we're looking for interesting relationships among attributes using the observations we have, are common, almost universal, across data analysis. One common visualization for determining the relationship between attributes is a scatter plot, where each diamond will be represented by one point. This is the point where, as graphers, we make a few decisions. Let's talk about aesthetics. An aesthetic is a dimension of a graph that we can perceive visually, the simplest example being the x and y axes. When we make a scatter plot, we choose one attribute to assign to the x-axis and one attribute to assign to the y-axis. Other aesthetics that we can use in a scatter plot are the color, size, and shape of the points in the graph. Each of these aesthetics lets us communicate some dimension of the data and understand com complex relationships between them. As an example, let's use ggplot2 to create a scatter plot where we put caret or weight on the x-axis and price in dollars on the y-axis. So now we make a ggplot call. We start by, with ggplot open parentheses. Now there are three parts to a ggplot2 graph. The first is the data we'll be graphing. In this case, we're plotting the diamonds data frame, so we type diamonds, comma. Second, we show the mapping of aesthetics to the attributes we'll be plotting. We type AES, meaning aesthetics, and in open parentheses, and now our assignments. We say x equals caret, say we want to put the caret or weight on the x-axis, then y equals price, saying what we want to put on the y-axis. Now that we've defined the structure of our graph, we're going to add a layer to it, that is, define what type of graph it is. In this case, we want to make a scatter plot. The name for that layer is geome underscore point. Geome is the typical start of each of these layers. So we have geome underscore point and then an open and close parentheses. Now we've defined our graph, hit return, and we see our scatter plot. See that we've placed caret on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. Every one of these points represents one row in our data frame, that is, one diamond. We've now communicated a relationship between those two attributes in the data set. As weight increases, price increases. Now, this plot shows two aesthetics, weight and price, but there are many other attributes of the data we can communicate. For example, we might want to see how the quality of the cut, or the color, or the clarity affects the price. Each of these variables is a factor. That means each value belongs to one of a finite number of categories. We can add this using another aesthetic. For example, the color of the points. To add an aesthetic, we can hit the up arrow to get to our previous line, and then we add into the AES call the aesthetics, comma, color equals, and let's use the clarity. This is a measurement of the quality of the clarity of each diamond to color our points. We hit return. Now every point is colored according to the quality of the clarity of that diamond. Notice that it created a legend on the right side. You can see that each of these uh, items in the legend represents one of the possible values of the clarity aesthetic. You can notice that some of the lighter diamonds are more expensive due to the fact that they have a higher clarity rating, and conversely, even some heavy diamonds aren't as expensive for having a low clarity rating. This is what leads to this rainbow pattern. So if we would rather see how the quality of the color or the cut of the diamond affects the price, we can change the aesthetic. Here in AES, we change clarity to color. Now every item in the color legend is one of the color, color qualities of the diamond. Or we can change it to cut. This way we can explore the relationship of each of these variables and how it affects the caret price relationship. Now what if we want to see the effect of both color and cut at the same time? We can use a fourth aesthetic, for example, the size of the points. So here we have 
color representing the clarity. Let's add another aesthetic. Let's say size equals the cut. Now, the size of every point is determined based on the, the cut, even while the color is still determined by the clarity. Similarly, we could use the shape to represent the cut. Shape equals cut. Now, every shape represents a different cut of the diamond. Now, this scatter plot is one layer, which means we can add additional layers besides the scatter plot using the plus sign. For example, what if we want to add a smoothing curve that shows the general trend of the data? That's a layer called geom underscore smooth. So let's take this plot, let's take out the color, and add a smoothing trend. So that's plus geom underscore smooth, open parentheses, close parentheses. The gray area around the curve is a confidence interval, suggesting how much uncertainty there is in this smoothing curve. If we want to turn off the confidence interval, we can add an option to the geom smooth layer. So specifically, throw up. SE for standard error equals false. This gets rid of the gray area, and now we can just see the smoothing curve. Similarly, if we would rather show a best fit straight line rather than a curve, we can change the method option in the geom smooth layer. So in this case, it's method equals quote LM, where LM stands for linear model. Now we fit a best fit line to the relation between caret and price within this geom smooth layer. If you use the color aesthetic while you're using Geom Smooth, ggplot will create one smoothing curve for each color. For example, if we add color equals clarity. And we see it actually has one curve for each of these colors. This is a useful way to compare and contrast multiple trends. Note that you can show this smoothing curve layer without showing your scatter plot layer simply by removing the geom point layer. So go to this line, delete geom point. It might be a bit clearer we can see just the SFIC curves without seeing the actual points.